Do you know that you can live for righteousness and healing? You can be an instrument of righteousness and healing. That's what we find in 1 Peter chapter 2 at the very end of chapter 2. I'm going to read just a couple of verses. But I'm going to use a number of other verses from Scripture. It's one of the greatest ways to illustrate uh, the points that are being made in 1 Peter. You can live for righteousness. Now, our culture, um, they're probably spooked by the word righteousness. And for them, they would think of it as holier than thou. Or um, they probably think that it's hypocritical because no one's righteous. And yet we see in the scriptures that there is a call to righteousness. And we find that here in 1 Peter chapter 2. And I love to begin this way. My mentor from Eugene, Oregon, Roy Hicks Jr., would always explain about the position that we have in Christ is one of righteousness. That's our position. Our practice is something less than that. Our position is uh, explained very well by Paul in Colossians where he says, as we're reconciled with Christ, he presents us holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight so that we are made righteous because of the righteousness of Christ. We are found in the righteousness of Christ. That's our position. And we can be at ease with that. And yet our practice is something less than that. And part of the call that we find here in 1 Peter is that we can be people that live out that righteousness. But we got to die to self. We got to die to sin. And that's what Peter's saying here. That my first point here is you can live for righteousness. You can make right choices in everything you do and everything you say. 1 Peter chapter 2 Verse 24, he, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. It reminds me of Romans 12, 1 and 2, where Paul begins that chapter and he says, I beseech you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That explains well what it means to die to self, to die to sin. A living sacrifice, it takes sacrifice. And then he says, and don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There is a transformation that can take place from the inside out, a transformation of righteousness, but we got to die. We got to sacrifice. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. We can be an instrument of righteousness. We can live for righteousness. We can be an example of righteousness. Being an instrument of righteousness is Leading by example, making right choices, making right decisions in everything you do and everything you say. Jesus is with us to help us to make right choices. And righteousness happens when we walk with the one who is righteous. The best way to illustrate that is, I think, Romans chapter 6. And I, I'm going to trust that the Holy Spirit will speak through these words. I'm going to read the entire chapter of Romans 6 because it's worth reading to illustrate what Peter's talking about here. And in this, I'm going to trust that the Holy Spirit will quicken certain thoughts to your heart. Here goes, Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live it any longer? And then he uses an illustration from water baptism. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. That explains well the process of this public declaration of our faith in Jesus by going down into the water. We're identifying with the death of Jesus and we're saying, Jesus, I die to self. I want to die to the old life. And as we're raised up out of the water, we're identifying with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ where we can live a new life in him. Verse 5 of Romans 6, For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. There's a whole sermon right there. Anyone who has died has been set free from sin. You've been set free from the, the clutches of sin from the past. Now, if we died with Christ, verse 8, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. 
The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. And then this key verse, verse 11. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. It's, it's simple and yet a daily challenge. The way to be dead to sin is to be alive unto God. We can be so caught up with doing the right thing and speaking right words, living righteous acts, that there's no time to give in to sin because we're so focused on pleasing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. He continues, verse 12, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. And let me quickly say, because we're under grace, we are all in process. And even when we stumble, Jesus is there to help us to get back up and to live righteously. So that's what it means to be under grace. Verse 17, but thanks be to God, though, that that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I have a tendency to want to change the word and say we're servants to righteousness. But it is important to see that we're slaves to righteousness instead of slaves to sin. You're going to be a slave to something. You're going to serve something. It's better to be a servant of righteousness than a slave to sin. Verse 19, I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. But what benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. And then this last verse, the famous verse that's been memorized by many. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. For the cost of sin, or the price of sin, is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You can live for righteousness. You can make a decision to die to sin and to live for Jesus. And you can make right choices. Jesus is with you every moment of every day to help you to say the right words and to, 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 to move into that place of living righteously and, and making the right choices in everything you do, in everything you say, in attitude and in action. And I can't help but think, of adding Romans chapter 8, I think it's verse 5 or 6, where Paul writes and he says that to be, to be fleshly minded or to be carnal, carnally minded is death, leads to death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Your best life that you can live is in living for Jesus, choosing righteousness rather than sin. You can live for righteousness. The second thing is this, there is healing in the power of the cross, and you can be an instrument of healing. Here's this famous phrase that Peter quotes from Isaiah. By his stripes you have been healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. It's worth reading from Isaiah, the context. Surely, this is Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. 
All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. By his stripes we are healed. That's an important phrase, and it speaks of the fact that there is healing in the power of the cross. There is healing in the atonement, and, and it's really important for us. And I want to challenge your faith. I want to encourage your faith to believe for great miracles, to believe that you can pray for people and they can be healed. You can be an instrument of healing. And I, I encourage you to pray in the spirit over your loved ones, to, to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them, to lay hands on them and to believe for healing, to invoke the, the, the power of the cross, to, to appropriate the work of the cross on your loved ones that they would be healed. Matthew chapter eight, verses 16 and 17, it recounts, what Jesus did when he, he was here on this earth. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And then one of the great commission statements that we find in the Gospels, Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We can be an instrument of healing. And I... One of my favorite stories from driving for Uber, I'll never forget picking up this young teenage girl up in Linwood, and I was driving her to Walmart, and on the way, sometimes you find yourself in an intersection, and all of a sudden you realize where you are, and I saw that right across the street was Mill Creek Foursquare Church. One of my friends, Chris Manginelli, Manginelli is the pastor of that church, and I said to this young teenager in the back seat, I, I said, you see that church right there? It's a great church. One of my friends is the pastor of that church. And she said to me, she said, oh, I, I've been going to that church for a number of years now. I was born blind in my right eye, and Jesus healed me at that church. I can see fine. It's a great, great testimony. Jesus is still healing today, and we can believe for great things. And I, would, I just want to encourage your faith to believe for great miracles to happen. To, to pray over your loved ones, to pray in the spirit and to believe for healing to happen. You can live for righteousness. You can make right choices, righteous words that will bring healing. And there is healing in the power of the cross and you can be an instrument of healing in these days. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for being the same yesterday, today and forever, that you are faithful to heal today and help us to be people of faith. Help us, Lord, to believe for great things in these days, that we would pray over our loved ones. We'd pray in the spirit for them. and We would appropriate the power of the cross. Help us, Lord, that, that, that you would say to us what you said to many people in the Gospels, according to your faith, be it unto you. Your faith has healed you. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to be people of faith in these days, to believe for great things, to believe for healing. Thank you, Jesus, for that. In your strong name we pray. Amen. Have a great rest of your weekend.